So now that you know how to find the resultant of two forces using vector addition, we're going to extend that theory to look at vector addition for three forces, or finding the resultant of three forces. So what we have on the page here is 120 Newton force on a bearing of 35 degrees. We have 135 Newton force on a bearing of minus 32 degrees. And the reason it's minus 32 is because this is the positive direction when measuring bearings, therefore this is the negative direction when measuring bearings. And we also have a 65 Newton force which will be on a bearing of minus 117 degrees because the difference between the 135 Newton force and the 65 Newton force is a further minus 85 degrees. But what we need to be able to do is to turn each of these forces into a right angle triangle with an X and Y component. So we can create a right angle triangle for our 120 Newton force there. We can create a right angle triangle for our 135 Newton force there. And we can create a right angle triangle for our 65 Newton force there. So before we can do any trigonometry on this, we need to find this angle here for the 65 Newton force. As the angles on a straight line are 180 degrees, like so, we know that the angle indicated on the diagram there is going to be 180 minus the 85 between the 65 Newton force and the 135 Newton force minus a further 32 for the angle between the horizontal and 135 Newton force. So that angle is going to be 63 degrees. Next I'm going to label each of these forces and it doesn't matter which order we add these together in. So it doesn't matter which force we label as force 1, which we label as force 2 and which we label as force 3. But I'm going to label them to make sure that I remember to include the components of all of these forces. And I'm then going to find the X and Y components of each of the forces. If we begin with the 120 Newton force or force 1, we have a right angle triangle where the longest side the 120 Newton force is the hypotenuse, the side opposite the angle is the opposite, and the remaining side is the adjacent. We have 135 Newton force where the longest side is the hypotenuse, the side opposite the angle is the opposite, and the remaining side again is the adjacent. And we have a 65 Newton force, the same rules, the hypotenuse is the longest side, the opposite is opposite the angle, and the adjacent is the remaining side. So we're going to analyse force 1 first of all. Force 1 has an X component, and that X component is the adjacent, and adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta. So for F1X we have a hypotenuse of 120, cos of the angle which is 35 degrees, and that gives us an F1x value of 98.30 newtons. Now as that component goes left to right, we know that it's positive. We're then going to find the y component of that force. So we've got F1y, and this time it's the opposite on the triangle, which is hypotenuse sine theta. So in this case it's 120 sine 35, which gives us 68.83 newtons. And once again, that's going to be positive because it goes from bottom to top. We can continue this for the next force, force 2. Well, the x component of force 2, once again, is the adjacent. We have a hypotenuse of 65 newtons. Cos of the angle. Well, that internal angle there is 63 degrees. So F2x is 65 cos 63, which is 29.51. And as we can see in this case, that force is going right to left, which is negative. Next, we can find F2y. Well, F2y is the opposite of that triangle, so 65 sine 63 degrees. And that gives us 57.92 newtons. And again, it's negative. It goes from top to bottom. And then we have our third force, F3x. 
equals, well, F3X is the adjacent again. It's 135 for the hypotenuse because of the angle, which is 32. 135 cos 32 is 114.49. And the x component of that force is going left to right, so it's positive. And finally, force 3 has a y component, which is the opposite on that triangle, so 135 sine 32. And 135 sine 32 is 71.54 newtons. Now this time, that force goes top to bottom, so it's negative. The next step in solving this problem is to find the x and y components of our resultants. So we have FRx, the x component of the resultant, which is the x component of all of the other forces added together. So we're going to add F1x, we're going to add F2x, and we're going to add F3x together. We've got 98.30. F2x is minus 29.51. And F3X is plus 114.49, giving us an X component for the resultant force of 183.28. The sign's important, it's positive. Now we can find the Y component of the resultant force once again by adding the Y components together. So F1Y is 68.83. F2Y is minus 57.92. And F3Y is minus 71.54. Which gives us a Y component for the resultant force of minus 60.63. So I've cleared some space once again to make room for the key information on this question. And what we have is a resultant force with an X component of plus 183.28 and a Y component of minus 60.63. So we can sketch those on a new triangle. 183.28 positive. 183.28. Newtons in the positive direction, left to right and 60.63 newtons negative, which is downwards on our diagram. Our resultant is then the single force that connects the start to the end. And that line there represents our resultant force. We're also going to be finding our equilibrium force, which will be acting in the opposite direction but will have the same magnitude as the resultant force. So let's find the magnitude of our resultant, which will also be the magnitude of our equilibrium. So the resultant equals, using Pythagoras' theorem, the square of the longest side equals the sum of the square of the two shorter sides, or said a different way, the resultant equals the square root of the sum of the square of the two shorter sides. The square of one of the shorter sides is 183, 0.28 squared and the other shorter side is 60.63 squared. Therefore the resultant equals 193.05 newtons. And that will also be the magnitude of our equilibrium. Next we need to define the direction. So we need to calculate this small angle here inside the triangle. We can then either define the bearing as a negative angle or we can determine the bearing by finding out the angle here on the diagram. So let's find our angle inside our triangle and we'll call it phi. So phi equals tan to the minus 1 of opposite over adjacent. Opposite is the side that's opposite the angle or the 60.63 newtons. And adjacent is the other shorter side, so the 183.28. Therefore, phi equals tan to the minus 1, 
divided by 183.28, which gives us a value of pi of 18.30 degrees. So if we write our summary line for our resultant, we can write the resultant equals 193.05 newtons, which was the magnitude of the resultant, on a bearing of minus 18.30 degrees. Or we can define that as a positive bearing, both are accurate. And as a positive bearing, that's going to be one full revolution of 360 degrees minus 18.30, which is 341.70 degrees. Either would be accurate. They mean the same thing. Next, we need to do the same for our equilibrium. Well, our equilibrium has the same magnitude, 193.05 newtons, on a bearing. Well, the bearing of the equilibrium, if we refer back to our diagram, is this angle here. And because opposite angles are equal, if I extend this line here, this angle here is going to be the same as thigh. Opposite angles are equal. So now hopefully you can see that the equilibrium is 180 degrees minus thigh. Well, 180 minus 18.3 is 161.7. Now once again, another way of looking at this is that there needs to be 180 degrees difference between the resultant and the equilibrium because they're acting in opposite directions. So there's a 180 degree difference between them. That means we can either subtract 180 from 341.70 or we can add 180 to 18.30. Either of those calculations will give us 161.70, which is the bearing of the equilibrium force. So there's usually more than one way that we can determine these angles. So use whichever method is more comfortable for you. Thank you.